from Hollywood, the Judy Canova Show, brought to you each week by the Colgate Palm Olive Peak Company, makers of Palm Olive Soap and Colgate Tooth Powder. Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and Colgate Tooth Powder for a naturally brilliant smile present the Judy Canova Show with Mel Blank, Ruby Dandridge, Berna Felton, Joe Kearns, George Neese, Opie Cates and his orchestra, and starring Judy Canova. <laughs> In a day, you have to pay for what you get. I will be here when you find me, so come and find me, my little pet. Brentwood home for the summer, and Judy's going back to the farm to help Uncle R.T. As our scene opens, Judy is packing her things and talking to Geranium. Hey, Miss Judy, I guess your Uncle R.T. really needs you on the farm. He sure does, Geranium. Why, everything's going wrong back there. He even wrote and told me that the cow was up on top of the barn. On top of the barn? How'd she get up there? There was a short circuit in the milking machine. <laughs> Yes, sir, she got such a shock, she can't even give any milk for cannon no more. Well, why not? She blew a fuse in one of her condensers. <laughs> oh, you know, I sure do like the farm geranium. <sighs> you remember the time the hogs got into the corn mash? Yeah, Miss Judy and those hogs sure did like corn mash. You said it. Mm. The mama hog had ten little snorts right in a row. <laughs> Say, Geranium, are you going to stay here at the house till you join me back on the farm? Oh, yeah, honey. I'm going to help you Anna rent the house. Oh, did she put an ad in the paper advertising it for rent? Yes, and the ad said, for rent, two-story house, lovely view, including made with upstairs heating. <laughs> oh, hello, Aunt Aggie. Aunt Judy, the ticket office just telephoned. They can't give you that upper berth. Oh, shucks. You know something? It's too bad we can't travel by rocket. Gosh, they say that after the war, rockets will go from California to New York in one hour. In one hour? Yep. The conductor hollers all aboard, and before you can sit down, the porter says, Did you enjoy your trip? <laughs> of course, you know what I'm going to yes, tell him when he asks me that. <laughs> I'm going to tell him the truth. Well, Judy, dear, I'd like I to am. speak to Geranium, all please. Right. In case Miss Judy gets a reservation, did you pack all her things? Oh, oh, yes, but I sure had a tough time. A suitcase was so full I could hardly get the tube of cold cream in. You couldn't get a tube of cold cream in my suitcase? Oh, don't worry, honey. I finally got it in. Yeah, what'd you do? I squeezed the cold cream out of the tube. <laughs> you didn't throw the cold cream away, did you? 
Oh, no, ma'am, I put it in your pajama pocket. <laughs> well, that's good. Gee, I sure hope I can leave tonight and get me a good berth. Oh, Judy, the County Montford and Charlie Bet Atwater are trying to get you a bedroom on the air-conditioned train. They are? Shucks, the train I came out on sure had a funny kind of air conditioning. Uh, what was it like, Judy? Well, every 15 minutes, the porter came to the door and blew through the keyhole. <laughs> and I blew right back to him. <laughs> and Aunt Aggie, the OPA sure kept me awake at night with all that there snoring. C-O-P-A, Judy? Yeah, other people's adenoids. <laughs> Steve Willikers, getting ready to leave is some job. Got me all wore out. Oh, I was so tired this morning, I could hardly put on my dress. Are you all in? Golly, I hope so. <laughs> Another Judy. little quick look. Let's see. Judy, dear. Huh? I know we'll all be right here together again the first week in September. <laughs> but I'm going to miss you this summer. I'll miss you too, Aunt Aggie. Gee, I hope you'll enjoy your vacation at Arrowhead Hot Springs. I will, Judy. The folders speak so highly of the men up there. <laughs> Why, Aunt Aggie, are you thinking of falling in love again? Why not, Judy? Love is a wonderful thing. Oh, I don't know. Love kind of sort of reminds me of an apple pie. An apple pie? Yeah. It's just a lot of applesauce and plenty of crust. <laughs> cheese sometimes, too. Pardon me for talking in your face, senorita. Oh, hello, Pedro. Senorita, if I drive you to the train, can I take my girl along and put my arm around her? Pedro, how can you drive a car and put your arm around a girl? Oh, senorita, it is easy. I just put on my brake and clutch. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not going on the train, senorita. Once I rode on a train and I got seasick. You got seasick on a train? How come? Well, I was sitting between two waves. <laughs> oh, Pedro, I'll bet you don't even know what a wave is. Oh, no, see, si, senorita, a wave is a sailor who says no. <laughs> was a grable-bodied seaman. <laughs> hey, uh, how are you and your girl getting along, Pedro? Oh, we get along very well, but I wish her father liked me better. Why, I thought her father did like you. You told me that he gave you some quarter cigars. See, si, but he smoked the other three quarters first. <laughs> Senorita, her father made me a drink of Mexico Moscatel Mosquet. Golly, what's that? Well, it's made out of tequila, Tabasco, chili, Acapulco, apple juice, and a piece of broccoli floating on top. Yeah, well, why do you call it Muscatel Musket? Well, one slug and you shoot off your mouth. <laughs> well, Pedro, you better help Winchester with the rest of the luggage now. Si, senorita. Muchas gracias. Munch on some grass yourself, Pedro. <laughs> Mr. Chauncey thinks he can get your reservation on tonight's train. Oh, that's wonderful, Judy. Well, all I hope is that it's a better place to sleep than I had the last time. Why? Where did you sleep? I ain't saying that, Aggie, but I was always the first one to brush my teeth in the morning. <laughs> At the moment, Judy is very anxious about her railroad ticket. So far, she's heard nothing definite from Chauncey or the Count de Montfort. Uh, Judy, you shouldn't have any trouble getting a ticket. No, why not, Aunt Aggie? Well, I heard that Lana Turner walked into a ticket office, and on her physical charms alone, she was given a drawing room with an inner spring mattress and a special seat in the dining car. Shucks, I tried to get a ticket on my physical charms once. They gave me a folding cot, a box lunch, and a map of Highway 66. <laughs> With all the detours in it. Oh. <laughs> you know, it ain't fair, Aunt Aggie. Why, even animals get a better break on trains than people do. What do you mean, Judy? Why, just the other day I read that a skunk got on a train and the conductor gave him a wide berth. <laughs> I wonder if they made it up for him. <laughs> Golly, I wonder if I can get space on a fast train. That's what's worrying me. Ugh. Me no think so. Say, who are you? Me Santa Fe chief. Woo-hoo! <laughs> Gosh, that fella 
sounds like he lost his reservation. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Oh, howdy, Winchester. Oh, Miss Canova, your luggage is packed, but in the event we have overlooked something, can we reach you at the farm? Why, sure. Just call me on the telephone. We got a 14-party party line. A 14-party party line? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a call for one man's family answered by we the people. Oh, my gracious, that must be a very small town. Small? Why, Winchester, that town's so small that when you see three fellers going down the street, they're not walking. That's a parade. <laughs> well, we'll miss you, Miss Canova. Tell me, why are you leaving here? Oh, I'll be back the first week in September. But you see, uh, Winchester, there's an egg shortage, and my Uncle R.T. wants me to help step up production. I don't know what I can do about it. <laughs> You know something? I've been reading in the paper that if you put a radio in the chicken coop, the music will help the hens lay more eggs. Shucks, Uncle R.T. tried that. He put a radio in the chicken coop and the hens didn't lay a single egg. Really? Why not? All day long, that radio played nothing but hold tight. <laughs> Well, tell me, Miss Canova, has your uncle got a nice farm? Oh, he sure has, Winchester. Why, all the furniture's made out of genuine cowhide. Genuine cowhide? How can you tell? We have to milk it every night. <laughs> hey, Miss Judith, there's a man here to get your trunks. Are these your trunks, lady? Yeah. Hey, but, mister, you look kind of puny to be lifting trunks. Me, puny? <laughs> Why, once I helped move a player piano. A player piano. I helped move an upright piano. It was an upright piano. I helped move a grand piano. It was a grand... A grand... A grand... A grand... It was a grand... I carried the music. <laughs> oh, shucks. I bet you can't even carry a tune. Carry a tune? Say, you should hear me imitate a man playing an electric organ. <laughs> You imitate an electric organ just by yourself? Why, sure. Just using my mouth and hands. You want to hear me? No, thanks. Okay, you talk me into it. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> When I go to the farm, Brenda Laverne will have Chauncey in the count all to herself. I'm worried. Hey, Miss Judy, what has Brenda Laverne got that you ain't got? Nothing. <laughs> but what I got, I'll have on the farm. And what she's got, she'll have right here. <laughs> oh, stop worrying, Miss Judy. You know Warren can change your whole face. Yeah, Geranium, they say that each little wrinkle in a woman's face is a sign of a disappointed love affair. Mm. Have you ever been disappointed in love? Have I? <laughs> Why, please, Blossom, you is now looking at Miss Prune face. <laughs> oh, howdy, Cal. Oh, Chevy. Oh, I will miss you when you go. You are so beautiful. Oh, thank you, Cal. Sometimes I think so and sometimes I don't. <laughs> Say, are you sure you're going to be true to me when I'm gone? That's what I'm wanting. Oh, my petite, when you are away, I will follow the straight and narrow. Uh, those might be the ones you follow, but I bet you'll whistle at the ones with curves. <laughs> Say, tell me, did you get my reservation? Oh, Cherie, I am desolate. I was unable to get one. Oh, count. Oh, but I brought you a book to read. Oh, gee, thanks. I love books. When I read a book on adventure, I feel adventurous. Yes? Yeah, and when I read a book on health, I feel healthy. Yes? Last night I read a book on love. And how do you feel today? Plum wore out. <laughs> Thank you.
clarinet and his orchestra playing I Want to Be Happy. <laughs> from Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, June is on its way out, and so are the hopes of a certain girl who hoped to be a June bride. She doesn't suspect that what sent her romance on the rocks was a little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. So ask yourself, could you be the victim of unpleasing breath? It's happened to thousands without their knowing. So just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Because scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing, and remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, the Count de Montfort failed to get Judy a railroad ticket, and Chauncey Van Atwaters had no luck either. But let's see what's happening. Aunt Aggie, this is awful. My trunks have gone, and the Count and Chauncey haven't even got me a railroad ticket yet. Oh, don't worry, Judy. If the worst comes to the worst, you can always hitchhike. Remember how Claudette Colbert did it in It Happened One Night? Oh, you mean stand on a highway and raise my skirt to the knee? <laughs> Shucks, I tried that. Did any cars stop? Just one. A car stopped, a girl got out, raised her skirt and said, Yours ain't so hot, sister. Look at mine. <laughs> and I wish you could have seen oh, him. She well, had on liquid don't be leg makeup. You know, mind, this liquid stocking. Don't be discouraged, Judy. I won't. Remember the old saying. <laughs> don't give up the ship. Yeah, especially if it's got sailors on it. <laughs> but don't worry, Aunt Aggie. I'll let you in on a little secret. I got a ticket and I got it myself. A ticket, Judy, in these times? Why, that's a miracle. How did you do it? Aunt Aggie, I got that ticket in a way that nobody would think of trying these days. How, Judy? I call a ticket office and ask for one. <laughs> Gosh, that was an explosion. Geranium, what was that noise? Well, I'll tell you, ma'am, I was cooking one of them price-controlled beef steaks and the stove blew up. A price-controlled beef steak? Yes, and I kept going up, but the beefsteak stopped at the ceiling. <laughs> Geranium, this steak is burned to a crisp. Yeah, that's what you get for reading that book while you're cooking. What book, Miss Judy? Forever Embers. <laughs> Aunt Aggie, I wonder if Chauncey will be true to me while he's on his vacation. Now, Judy, you have no strings on Chauncey. After all, it was just a platonic friendship. Platonic friendship? What's that? Well, Judy... That's when a boy meets a girl and they have a good time together reading books, discussing fine literature and attending lectures. Yeah, oh, you mean like the sailors do on shore leaves, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Canova, Mr. Chauncey Van Atwater's yard, see you. Thank you, Winchester. Show him in, please. Hello, Judy. Hello, Chauncey. Oh, gosh, you look wonderful tonight. I'm going to miss you something awful. Well, I don't blame you, Chauncey. I'm something awful to miss. <laughs> anyway, I'll be back the first week in September. But, gee, Chauncey, are you sure I'm your type? Judy, I want someone always near me, someone I can trust, someone faithful who'll be close at my side when I call. Chauncey, you don't want a woman. You want a cocker spaniel. <laughs> With long ears. <laughs> Judy, Judy, I'm serious. Kiss me. No, Chauncey. Oh, Judy, I won't take no for an answer. I'm going to kiss you anyway. If you do, I'll scream at the bottom of my voice. <laughs> kiss me. Chauncey, I only let a man kiss me when I'm saying goodbye. You do? Yeah. Goodbye, 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 goodbye,
We just made it to the station in time, Judy. Yeah, but we wouldn't have if Pedro had stopped the car any quicker. What do you mean? Well, sir, it took me ten minutes to get my head out of the glove compartment. <laughs> yeah, you know we ought to clean that uh, thing out yes, sometime. Yes, we will. <laughs> oh, the silliest looking Judy, things in there. Judy, dear, Ma'am? now listen. <laughs> we ought to go into that I thing. know we should, but Judy, in a few minutes you'll be gone. Oh. And the house will seem empty without you. You've tried my patience at times, but I want you to know I'll really miss you. Oh, I'll miss you too, Aunt Aggie. But I'll be back in September. Gee, you kind of sorry I didn't make good as a debutante. Why, Judy, you did well. The Brentwood paper said you were a leader of the social groups. Yeah, but they spell groups with a D. <laughs> yeah, that newspaper fella must have learned to spell eating alphabet soup. <laughs> they get kind of jumbled sometimes, I reckon. Pardon me for talking in your face, Senorita. I have a present for you to take back to the farm. Oh, thank you, Pedro. Why, it's a little Cupid doll. See, my girl has hair just like her. Hair just like this doll? See. That's wonderful. Oh, no, it is pasted on, too. <laughs> Pedro, what are you going to do until you meet me back on the farm? Oh, Senorita, I'm going to be a lifeguard by the lake at Palm Springs. But, Pedro, Palm Springs is in the desert. That lake is a dry lake. There's no water in it. See, that is why I got the job. I cannot swim. <laughs> well, it's all right. Senorita, I am sad to see you go away. Oh, thank you, Pedro. But you'll be joining me pretty soon, and we'll all be back here together again on September 1st. See, and always remember, 30 days, Hacienda, April, June, and Sombrero. All the rest have 31 except the pretty girls, and they use the 14-day palmolive plan, no? <laughs> oh, there's your train, Judy. Yep, and that's the first time anything's whistled at me since I came to Hollywood. <laughs> Goodbye, Aunt Aggie. Goodbye, Geranium. Bye. Goodbye, Pedro. Bye. 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 Now, here's Judy Canova to sing the beautiful ballad, Tears on My Pillow. Tears on my pillow each morning I cry when I dream about you When I should be sleeping I just lay there weeping Wondering if you're weeping too Trying so hard to forget you But that's not so easy to do With tears on my pillow each morning Tears that I shed over you Tears on my pillow each morning I cry when I dream about you When I should be sleeping I just lay there weeping and wondering if you're Oh, I'm trying so hard to forget you, but that's not so easy to do. With tears on my pillow each 
a Palmolive plan for a lovelier complexion. And don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder night and morning and before every day. Folks, it's been awfully nice being with you every Saturday night for the past six months. We're leaving the air for eight weeks tonight. And before we sign off, I want to thank you for listening in and being such a swell audience. I want to thank our sponsor, too, the Colgate Palm Olive Peak Company. And I'd like to thank all my cast, Mel Blank, Ruby Dandridge, Verna Felson, Joe Kern, George Neese, Opie Cates, Vern Smith, Dick Tate, Floyd Caton, and my writers, Fred L. Fox, Henry Hoople, Hal Finberg, and John Ward. My engineer, Eddie Miller, and my director-producer, Joe Rhine. We'll all be back again on Saturday, September 1st. And I hope we'll be seeing you then. In the meantime, have a wonderful summer. And please don't forget the two products that brought us together each week, palm olive soap and Colgate tooth powder. This is Judy Canova from Hollywood saying, Good night, soul.